Good morning, church. It is good to be with you today. And today we are excited to get to be in uh, the book of Hebrews. Uh, it's one of my favorite books of the New Testament. I just love the theology, the warnings that we get, how it's written. Um, I just love a lot of things about it. So I'm excited we get to get into it and talk about it together. But before we get there, I want to consider 2 Kings, and we get to King um, Azariah, which is King Uzziah in Chronicles, and we get a little bit more about him. He did what was right in the Lord's eyes, but the high places were not removed, and so he developed that skin disease and that issue that we read about in more detail yesterday. And a lot of the kings, we've been hearing this statement, the high places were not removed. Israel had a habit of going to different places to worship, picking different holy spots, and they would uh, establish them as different places where it was valid to worship God, even though God had said, only at my temple in Jerusalem. That's the place to go. And this is a good reminder for us that we can do a lot that's right. We can live our lives very well, but we can have some significant issues, high places, things we're just not willing to give up that are going to cause us to stumble and ultimately to be displeasing to God. And so I would encourage you, church, to consider, is there a high place in my life is there some place uh, other than the throne of God that I want to go to worship? Is there something that I'm clinging on to from my past life that I want to keep that I'm not willing to give up to God? And then we go to Ahaz. Remember yesterday, Ahaz, when Isaiah went to him and said, tell God what sign you want to, as a reminder that he is going to handle these kings. And he said, oh, I wouldn't dare test God. And so we get that prophecy that the virgin will give birth to a son and he'll be called Emmanuel, God with us. Well, we see today he's a bad dude. Chronicles doesn't tell us, but he sacrificed his children in the fire. That's to Molech. Uh, he, they were born and then there was like this offering plate over this hearth that they would kill the kids and burn them on this plate, passing them through the fire. And and he would dare say, but I won't test God. Again, we get this reminder, you don't just sound good, don't just sound holy, but then live an abomination of a life like Ahaz. The actions have to back up the words. Uh, so that our lives really are pleasing to God, because what is just lip service to our Lord? It's the kind of stuff that makes him say, go away. Uh, you know, I don't want your prayers. You know, I won't listen to your prayers. Uh, get away from me. So let's not have that happen to us. And then we get into Hebrews chapter 1, exalting Jesus, through whom all things were created and sustained. Again, as we read through scripture, we love to look for clues about the divinity of Jesus and who he is. And chapter 1 of Hebrews is certainly a great, uh, great place to start because he can't be created if all things were created through him. It is just how, uh, how God operates. That, And we go back to... Genesis 1 and John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Genesis 1. And the Spirit hovered over the water, and God spoke. What would what did he speak? You know, he spoke the Word. And so that Word being the agent of creation, John 1 tells us the Word is God. And Hebrews 1 tells us and confirms that all things were created and are sustained through Jesus. So we see this consistency through Scripture, and that's, again, another thing we're always looking for, is Scripture consistent with itself. 
And the answer is yes. And that gives us confidence in the message. And that gives us hope that our God is with us and always remembering his promises. Well, I love you, church. And I look forward to talking to you soon again.